Good evening again, everyone. Welcome back to the Bridge Believer Center. Uh, Walk in the Word Wednesday Bible Study. Have you been uh, enriched by this lesson thus far? Because tonight we're going to shift from the K to the W. I just need to know where we are right now so that we can hit it. Hit it. Hit it and quit it. <laughs> Amen. And so, um, for those of you that have been following along, we have this chart. It is the no, uh, it is a chart that I used when I was teaching. Uh, teaching in the classroom and at the beginning of the year it was more of an assessment so the K was to assess what they knew what they should have known uh, based on their age grade level development and things like that and then the W was for what is it that you want to know what do you want to find out the H was how you're going to find it out and by the end of the year that last category should be what it is that you've learned so we're using that kind of format for our series, Knowledge is Power. Last, uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about what God wants us to know, where you should be um, in your development, whether you're a babe in Christ or whether you are a seasoned uh, soldier in the Lord. These are some things that you should know. You, you, you can't develop a full relationship with him if you did not know these things, okay? And so um, I'm, I'm not going to recap everything for you. I'm going to ask that you will please go back and look at the lessons. Uh, but I will say that the first thing and the most important thing that God wants you to know is that he loves you. Everything else um, is is based on everything else makes more sense is understood through the lens of his love it's the difference between uh, when a parent uh, punishes a child if they if the child knows that the parent loves them then the punishment should be constructive and not destructive they know that the parent and they may not always know that at the beginning sometimes they think oh they're just trying to steal my fun but what they will come to understand is that everything that the parent did through the lens of their love was for their benefit because they loved them because they wanted the best for them because um, they wanted to make sure that they were able to succeed at whatever it is uh, that they put their hands to. And so if you don't remember anything else, you need to know that God loves you because it is his love that we need to see everything else uh, about him through that lens. Okay. Um, we don't know if, if we know that he's a planner, but we don't know that he loves us, then we think he plans bad things for us. He's planning to uh, bring us to our demise. He's planning to hurt, to harm us. And so we have to know that God loves us. So go ahead and go back and review those. Um, Brother Joseph has them up on the screen uh, and he'll scroll through those. But tonight we want to go to the next category, the wonder. What do you want to know? And the fact that I got absolutely no questions, none, I got no questions, uh, says to me that you all know everything, <laughs> which I know to be an untruth because I don't know everything, okay? Or you were just too busy to ask or you just didn't want to seem um, ignorant or embarrassed by asking, whatever the case may be. It's okay. I still got you. We're going to go over it anyhow. Okay. So most people, w when they find out what it is that God wants us to know, the question now comes, uh, what is it that you want to know? Okay. And I believe that 
what you want to know, while there are many uh, subtopics, I believe they can be summed up in the five W's, okay? The question uh, interrogatory uh, W's. And for those of you who may not know them, we're gonna go back to school and refresh our memory. That first W is why, right? Uh, or who, they, they come in different orders, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why. And then later in school, we found out that there was a how, right? But we're not gonna include how because the next category is how, okay? <laughs> so we, we wonder, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why. Those are really the sum of our, what we want to know, okay? Those are our questions. Uh, Who's going to take care of me now that my husband is gone and has left me a widow? Uh, what am I going to do uh, when I don't have money and the pandemic has depleted my savings and I am now faced with downsizing my house and things like, what am I going to do? Uh, when is Jesus going to do, when is God going to do something about all of this injustice? When is he going to do something about uh, the the unjust treatment of people like uh, Tyrese Nichols, uh, you know, Freddie Gray, um, uh, the names escape me right now, Sandra Bland, all of them. When is, when is God going to do something about Eric Gardner, um, Brianna, say their names, amen. Uh, when is he going to do something, right? And then where is God? They, we, you, you said that he was everywhere. You said that he was ever present, but how is he present and all of this stuff keeps happening? How is he really present but there's so much suffering there's so much evil there's so much wickedness there's so much pain right so where is he and then why we ask that question a lot we don't realize how frequent we ask that question why why did god allow that why uh didn't he stop that why uh is he allowing the enemy to prevail? Why, why, why? That's really what we want to know. So no matter what your question is or was, even though y'all didn't send them to me, uh, I know that your question, what you want to know, will fall into one of those categories. It's gonna fall in the who, a what, a when, a where, or why. And so we want to explore that tonight uh, and for the next couple of weeks, um, the, the what you want to know, okay? But I'm going to go a little bit out of order and I'm going to start with the why. I'm going to start with the why, why, because that's the question, <laughs> that's the question we ask most frequently, right? I know I wear that question out with my children. Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you, you, why, child, why, why did you, why, <laughs> you know, so we're going to discuss the why tonight of what do I want to know, what do we really want to know, and as I stated, there are uh, several questions uh, that can fall into that, but what we really want to know goes beyond our rent, our mortgage, our health, um, our, our future plans. What we really want to know, the why, is uh, why God is allowing. And we had to cover this secondary because in order to understand the why, we had to understand the who, right? Who God is, and that's why we covered that he is love, that he is a planner, that he is concerned, that he is ever present, that he is never changing, that he has all power, that he is the truth, that he is uh, omniscient, that he is perfect, that he is good. That's why we had to cover that first because then the question comes, why? If God is love, then why is there so much hate, right? If God is a planner, then why? Why is he allowing this to happen to me? If the plan was to give me hope in the future, then why do I feel like I'm being cut short? 
And so we want to deal with uh, that question. The first thing, and I know uh, because you all are diligent students of the word and you're going to go back over this and you're going to um, research it and you're going to regurgitate it and, and digest it and meditate on the word of God. I know you got your pens and pencils ready, right? So the first thing I want you to know, the why, is to fulfill his plan and his purpose. To fulfill his plan and purpose. Why? Because he was fulfilling his plan and purpose. Why? Why, why did uh, September 11th happen? to bring about plan and purpose, right? But what was the purpose for such a destructive day, such a day of mourning and, and death and calamity? Why? Well, part of the reason uh, has to do with our uh, ability to follow instructions. Yeah. He said, first of all, that thou shall have no other God before me that we were instructed that we were to love our neighbors as ourselves. We were instructed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And when we have fallen and broken down those basic uh, instructions, then we get events like September 11th. Why did that happen? Because we haven't learned how to love our neighbor as ourselves, which would go to, you know, go to speak that we have to first how, learn how to love ourselves because some of us don't love ourselves. We have such a toxic and sick view of who we are and we look at others through the lens and the perspective of our pain, through our experiences, our hurts, our disappointments. Um, people that have let us down and as a result we have built up bitterness and unforgiveness and resentment in our hearts when what we have to do is to obey the word of the Lord obeying the word of the Lord does not mean that we will have no problems but what it does mean is that we understand that our problems our situations everything that goes around and our lives ultimately is to fulfill his plan and his purpose. So if you look at your notes where we find out that God is a planner, the scripture there is Jeremiah 29 and 11. We, we, you're going to see this scripture <clears throat> probably a couple of times um, in this in this. Um, lesson because we need to know I need to drill that in that it whatever is happening in your life has not caught God off, by, uh, off guard it is not by happenstance uh, that this is happening to you there is a reason right whether the reason is uh, God's orchestrating or your disobedience there is a reason but even in that it is still to bring about his plan and his purpose. That scripture is Jeremiah 29 and 11, right? He has a plan. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. And there are plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future, okay? Uh, we need to know Proverbs 16 and 9. It says the heart of a man plans his way, right? Meaning that there is some a level of responsibility and accountability that we have. But, Proverbs 16 and 9 says, but it is the Lord that establishes his way. Right? It ultimately, it still comes back to what he wants to be done, what is going to be of maximum benefit for all those involved and that he gets the glory, 
Okay, Proverbs 19 and 21 <clears throat> says this, says many are the plans in the mind. This is the English Standard Version. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Right. As parents, we know this one all too well. Right. Because we know our kids, they have some plans. <laughs> We know that they want to do some stuff, right? They they try and do what they want to do, right? But ultimately, it is the will of the parent <laughs> that stands. You can go and slam the door all you want. You better not slam the door in my house. You can roll your eyes, huff and puff. I would strongly suggest you not do that. That's a very dangerous uh, proposition for you. But you can do all of that, but what will stand is the word of the one who has the authority, the one who has uh, the bigger insight and picture in mind. Yeah, I know you want to go driving, but yeah, it's crazy people out here today. I'm not saying that you are unable to drive. I'm saying right now, I don't think it's a good idea because there are others that are not as responsible as you. So does that mean I can drive? No, that means that you can't drive. <laughs> My word stands. And the same is true with God. He is the why of what's happening is to fulfill his plan and his purpose. Part of his plan is not just, unfortunately, uh, a, a lot of preachers in the church have made it seem like the only plan that God has is to prosper us. The only thing that God uh, plans is to make us rich, to ha have houses and lands and, uh, uh, you know, make it rain for us in our lives. And while the Bible is clear, says that I would that you would prosper and be in health, even as your souls prosper, I, he, he, he said, look, I ain't got a problem with you having all that. But the purpose of that is that it will bring glory to God, that it will promote the kingdom of God here on earth so that none of those who are headed towards destruction will have to go that way that it will ultimately point back to me who is love, God who is love. And so the why to fulfill his purpose and his plans. Uh, Ephesians 2.10, let me give you some more scripture. This is Bible study, right? Uh, Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are his workmanship. Right, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them, that we should obey them. Right? That we have a purpose for what He has in our lives. Uh, another uh, scripture that I want to leave with you, and then we're going to move on, is it found in Job? Job 42 and 2. Are y'all getting all of this down? I, Jeremiah 29, 11. Proverbs 16 and 9. Proverbs 19, 21. Ephesians 2, 10. Excuse me. Okay, and then I want you to look at Job 42 and 2. And here's a, a, a conversation that Job was having uh, when all of the calamity happened to him. Ultimately, he came to the, the, the conclusion that I know you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. In other words, no matter how hard we try, no matter how disobedient we are, no matter uh, if we choose to obey or not, his plan is still going to be carried out. Let me give you an example. Uh, you're at a job, right? And for whatever reason, work relationship breaks down, 
They give you warning. You don't heed the warning. You get fired. You come with the attitude, well, if I ain't there, it's not going to get done. And then you get your feelings hurt when you have been replaced within less than 24 hours. Why? Because the plan (laughs) and the purpose still carries on. Right? There may be de- there may be a delay. We may have to shift uh, some some things around. We may have to go about it with a different method. But the end goal is the same, and that is to produce and and, and to give what it is that we were designed, purpose, planned to give. Okay. Excuse me. And so we have to know that whatever the why is, that ultimately one of the things is that it's to fulfill his plan and his purpose. Okay, Um, I want to give you one more scripture, one more scripture, Jeremiah 1 and 12. Jeremiah 1 and 12. And this is when he was calling uh, Jeremiah to the assignment that he had for his life as a prophet, as a seer. And he asked Jeremiah, he said, what is it that you see? Tell me what you see. And God was revealing to him certain things uh, about the uh, the the uh, Israel, uh, Israelite nation about what was to come, about what was to happen. But he said, can you see? Can you see? What is it that you see? Right? And when Jeremiah says, well, this is what I see, he comes to him and affirms that what you saw was really what I was showing you in the right perspective. Okay? It says, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast seen well, or has well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Another translation says, for I watch over my word to perform it. In other words, the plan and the purpose are still in effect. Uh, But then the, the second reason why is not just to fulfill his plan and his purpose, but the second reason that answers our why is to prepare us. The why is to prepare us, right? Many of us admire and are appreciative to our men, our service men and women uh, in all the different branches of, of, of military service, right? We are, we, we are thankful for our, our army, our Navy. Um, my mind just totally blanked, uh, uh, Air Force, all of those. We're appreciative to our Coast Guards, uh, reserves, all of them, right? But they don't just start on the battlefield. They don't just start in their assignment. There is what's called basic training, right? He has to prepare us for the work that is going to be assigned a little later on. And many, many people fall out during basic training because they're unable to handle the stress, the weight, the responsibility, the accountability that is placed on them during the training process. And sometimes God allows it, uh, well, he allows it to prepare us, but also to show us that what you think you want is not necessarily what I've designed a purpose for you, right? Uh, I'm, I'm preparing you for greater, but I'm also, you know, stopping what's coming your way. Uh, what you think you want is, is going to distract you and disrail you from what the plan is, okay? So he has to prepare us. So they go through basic training. They go through 
Um, they go through the, the crawls, the, uh, push-ups, the physical exertion. They go through, um, sometimes the demeaning, um, uh, tasks that they have. They go through being, uh, made to be subject and, and follow orders, right? Uh, you, we got to know that when we give an order, it's going to be carried out. He prepares us because what happens if we're not prepared and we get out there on that battlefield and while they may be in battlefield in uh, domestic and foreign territories, we are in the battlefield in a whole different level of warfare. We are in spiritual warfare and the game is not the same, right? The Bible declares that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, that our our fight, our warfare is within the spirit realm. It is with spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness, those things that are in high places, strongholds. That's why our weapons can't be the same, right? They prepare you how to use your weapon. Some people that come to the military have never shot a weapon. Some of them have never uh, uh, used uh, any type of heavy material, uh, artillery or uh, materials or anything like that. So they prepare them for the work ahead. The same is true with us. God does it so that he can prepare us for what lies ahead. You said, okay, preacher, give it to me. Give me the scripture for that. Okay, I want you to go ahead and turn to uh, Acts, Acts 2. Well, let's start a little earlier. Let's start a little earlier. Let's go to Acts 1 and 8. Acts 1 and 8. Actually, I want to go back a little further. Let's go back. Let's we we got to do it in context so that you so that you get it. Okay. Let's let's start at let's start at verse one. Okay. Um, Acts one and one says the the first account, and this is the amplified version. Says the first account I made. Theophilus was. A continuous report about all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day when he ascended to heaven after he had by the Holy Spirit given instruction to the apostles special messengers whom he had chosen teaching that's a preparatory uh, tactic that's that's for uh, to prepare us for what's ahead. To these men, he also showed himself alive after his suffering in Gethsemane, Gethsemane and on the cross by a series of many infallible proofs and unquestionable demonstrations appearing to them over a period of 40 days and talking to them about the things concerning the kingdom of God. So here it is again, he's preparing us, uh, not just in the teaching, but in the demonstration. Jesus understood that some are auditory learners, some are uh, kin kinesthetic or kinetic or, uh, learners where they have to uh, do hands-on, some uh, can read it and get it, you know, but he did it in such a way that all of them were able to grasp the concepts that he was laying out, okay? So he demonstrated it, unquestionable demonstrated, infallible proofs, but then here's the thing. It didn't just happen overnight. And I think we missed that part, right? We said, okay, God, prepare me. You know, one of my favorite gospel artists is that of Daryl Coley. And I love his song, he's preparing me. Uh, for what's coming ahead but many of us we say that but we really don't want to deal with that <laughs> right because we think that the preparation should only last a day we think that 
you know, with the use of technology, we should just be able to download it all and then just get right to it. Nope, 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 nope. That doesn't work that way. There is a time of training, of preparation. Here in Acts says over 40 days, a period over a period of 40 days. But that was on the back end, right? He spent three years, almost three years with his disciples and apostles, walking, living, eating, uh, interacting among them for three years. So you see the 40 days. No, I can do 40 days, but no, you, you missed the last three years where he had to break them of their own habits, their own thoughts, their own uh, willingness to do what they want to do, especially that one Peter, right? He had to help him out. He was like, I got this. Peter was like, oh, oh, I know what to do. I got a knife. <laughs> I got a sword. I know how to use it. And Jesus had to break that in him and say, look, I'm going to need you to fight, but you're fighting the wrong fight. So let me help you out before you get arrested. And, you know, we, we living out here. You ain't got no bail money. Let me, let me put the ear back on. <laughs> I, I need to teach you that there's a time and a place and a season to be angry and then a time not to be. There's a time to speak up and then there's a time to, you know, be quiet. There's a time to love and there is a time to refrain from loving, right? So it says over a period of 40 days and talking to them about the things concerning the kingdom. Let's keep going. Yes, sis, people want overnight preparation. And and that, look, that's a whole sermon in and of itself. That's why we have so many. Let me just, that, that's why our world is so jacked up. Because nobody wants to sit and learn. To sit and be disciplined. To sit and to study. They just want the name, the fame, and the, you know, the glam of it all. But no, there's a time of preparation that is needed. Let me keep reading. While being together and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the father had promised. He's preparing us because he has something promised for us. But we got to wait. We got to wait for it. Of which he said, you have heard me speak for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized and empowered and united with the Holy Spirit not long from now. So he told them, wait, wait. I know you're ready. I know you think you got this, but I need you to wait. I know you think you can go in at this on your own and you're ready to take on the world. You feel energized, but I need you to prepare because you're going to hit a wall and I need you to know how to rebound from that wall. One of the things, and again, I'm not a sports person, but what I have found out is that in football, they teach you how to take a tumble. When you fall, they teach you how to roll so that you don't hurt yourself. In basketball, they teach you how to take a charge, Right? They teach you how to do that, to plant your feet and don't move, because if you move, then it's considered a foul, right? On you. But if you if you plant your feet and take that hit, not that it's, you know, a good thing, but they teach you how to do that so that the, the um, offensive gets the foul, right? They teach you these things. Wait. Wait. Until you receive power. And with preparation comes power. With preparation comes understanding. With preparation comes the knowledge of why we do what we do. And why things operate the way they operate. With preparation, you are able to understand the why. So... Verse 8, you'll receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be what? Not glorifying yourself, not for your own satisfaction, not for your name to be seen in lights, but you will be, I'm preparing you to be my witnesses to tell people about me. Our churches have lost their power because they're telling 
people about prosperity and there's nothing wrong with that. They're telling people about um, uh, a piece of the pie, a land, all of these other things, but they have forgotten to say that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Yes, God wants you to be successful. Yes, he wants you to succeed. Yes, he wants you to be in health as your soul prospers, as you lean and depend on him, as you give him the glory. And so he has to prepare us, the why. Kids, why do I have to wash up? So you can get prepared for school and so you don't stink. Well, why do I have to use soap? Because water don't get all of it, honey. <laughs> you need some soap. And then afterwards, you need to prepare yourself with some deodorant, some smell goods, whether that's powder, lotion, or whatever the case may be. You need to prepare yourself with clothes, proper clothes, clothes that fit, clothes that are not sagging, uh, clothes that are not wrinkled, preferably. Mm. <laughs> Right? Clothes that are representative of whose and whose you are. Right? You got to do that. So he wants to prepare us. The third thing, let me move on. It's not just the why explains the fulfillment of his plan and purpose. The why explains that he wants to prepare us. But the other why is to perfect us. To perfect us. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough just to prepare. But God, certain assignments need a level of skill and expertise. So while he's preparing us and showing us demonstrations, then he gives us lab assignments. Yeah. Yeah. He gives us uh, our own spiritual residency so that what we have been learning and preparing for, we can put it into practice so that it perfects us, right? So you wouldn't want a doctor who's gone through the schooling but never had a patient, never did a residency, don't know how to uh, <laughs> take blood, you know, they, it take them five sticks and look, I'm going to tell you right now, honestly, by the second stick, if you can't get it, you need to go get somebody else. You know, they say three, six, no, I'm, I give you one stick, two possible, but if you ain't got it by the second, go get somebody that can do it. Cause otherwise we go, <laughs> we go have a problem, right? But the more you do it, the better you should be getting at it, right? So that by the time you get to the patient, they have a level of confidence that, oh, they know what they're talking about. They know uh, what it is. Uh, I can trust what they say and follow the, the instructions with a level of confidence that the outcome will be uh, what it needs to be, okay? So, he does it to perfect us, to make us better. To he, he, he brings us to situations to develop our prayer life. Many times, if we have everything good, we seemingly forget that we need God. So, he said, okay, I haven't seen them on their knees lately. Let's bring them back into the closet. <laughs> Let's present a situation that causes them to run to the throne. Yeah. So that, and it builds that muscle. So that when you're faced with that situation in game time or in war time or whatever, uh, crunch time or show time, go time, it is that you'll know what to do. It, the muscle memory of it is there. Okay. Uh, the, 
fourth thing, oh, no, nope, 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 nope. Let me back up. I'm going, I'm, I'm trying to hurry because I realize that we are a little, um, my apologies. Okay, there we are. I want to give you one uh, 1 Peter 5.10 for this point. 1 Peter 5.10. And I want to read, I love this. I want to read this from the, um, the Living Bible translation. The Living Bible Translation. And it says this. That's 1 Peter. <clears throat> ah. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 1 Peter, the Living Bible, says this. It says... After you have suffered a little while, some of us, we, we just lost God right there. <laughs> Hello, Sister Radke. So great to see you on the line. We, we lost God right there. After you have suffered a little while. What? Uh-uh. We're not feeling that God. Right? Our God who is full of kindness, we don't think that when we're suffering, right? Through Christ, will give you his eternal glory. He personally, oh, I love this. He personally will come and pick you up and set you firmly in place and make you stronger than ever. Ah, there is purpose in our suffering. And it comes to perfect us. That word uh, in the King James where it says to set you firmly in place and make you stronger says so that he can establish and perfect you, make you perfect, establish, um, excuse me, perfect, establish, strengthen and settle you. What that means, he wants you to be the best. Okay? So the why. Fulfill his plan and purpose. Why? To prepare us. Why? To perfect us. Why? To protect us. Yeah. Why are there rules of the road, even though it don't seem like nobody is following them? Why? Why? To protect us. God wants to protect us. Why? Because he's a. Didn't I just tell you that he loves? He loves you. He wants the best for you. He doesn't want you hurt. Right? He just said he had a plan and a purpose for us. And if he doesn't protect his investment. If he doesn't protect his children. Then that comes it, 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 it will come to destroy and nullify the plan and the purpose he has for our life. He said, it's not to harm you. It may hurt, but it's not going to harm you. You're going to get a whipping and it's going to sting. <laughs> but it's to protect you. It's a reminder. Don't touch. Don't go. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Don't engage. <laughs> Why? Why can't I do this? T to protect you. And as parents, I got to go, I got to go. It's already after eight o'clock. But as parents, sometimes we have to, we don't owe our children explanations, but I think it, it, it makes us a more responsible and responsive parent when we do give them the why sometimes, right? Sometimes we, j we just need your obedience, right? Don't, don't ask me why right now. Just do what I said do. 
because we see uh, whatever it is that we see is, is about to transpire and we just need your obedience. But then there are times where we need to circle back around and explain the why. When mommy told you to go in the house uh, a little bit earlier, we saw something happening um, that could have presented itself as a danger. And at the moment, I was not in a position to have conversation with you. I needed to cover you. I needed you to obey, hear my voice and obey it so that you were protected. Now I can tell you that car that was creeping down the streets with all smoked out windows, turn the lights out even though it's dark, you know, <laughs> turn the music off, start cracking windows. You, you understand what I'm saying? We saw what was happening and to protect you, we told you to move. We told you to go back in the house, go back on the porch, do whatever it is that we, we were instructing you to do, but it was to protect you. Some of us are so doggone stubborn. Oh my goodness. We are so stubborn because we want to sit here and argue with God. Why? Why? Why I can't do this? Why I got to go in the house? Why can't I be on the stage? Why? You know, we sit up here having this conversation with God. Why? 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 We got the neck going, got the fingers going, got the, you know. <laughs> and God has said, look, you crazy child. I'm trying to protect you. Why can't I have him? Uh, he, he good. He go to church, baby. Everybody in the church don't mean that they're in Christ. I'm telling you, he no good. But look, he got a job. Yeah, his job is to steal, kill, and to destroy. <laughs> I'm trying to protect you, boo. But why, God? Why? I'm trying to protect you. What have you been asking God? Why God? Why? 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 <laughs> Why? And he said to protect you, 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 to protect you. Did I tell you to protect you? <laughs> I can't answer that question for you, but I am about 110% sure that somewhere in your life, you have done that to God. You've done it to your parents. I'm pretty sure you've done it to your boss. You've done it to your friends. Why? Your friend was like, uh, uh, girl, uh, uh, don't, 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 don't deal with him. Why? But he's so crude. Uh, 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 uh. I see something, <laughs> right? But you just being a hater. I'm, I'm not being a hater. I love you. And I see that they got bow wow all over them. Don't do it. Please don't do it. To protect us. To protect us. Psalms 91. I gotta I gotta go. 91 says this. Says he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hold on. I, I want to do a different version. Let's, let's. My computer is moving so slow. <laughs> I apologize. Shall, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. What is a refuge and my fortress? What are those? Those, those are protective means. My God in him will I trust. And that trust means I will obey. I will do what I need to do. Part of that says that you need to stay under his wing. But God, under your wing, I, you, they can't see my outfit. If if you keep covering me up, then they can't see I got curves. They can't see I got moves. They can't see. <laughs> and he like, stay here. Stay. What, what do we do to our children? Stay by my side. 
stay on my hip, right? But why stay? Get get back over here. Get back over here. I used to train my children that if they got too far ahead of me, I would just stop and reach my hand out. And they understood that if I couldn't touch them, then they were too far away. And what they would do is they would either stop and I would come towards them or they would back it up where I was, where they were within arm's reach. He who dwells in the secret place, right? Verse three, surely he shall deliver thee, protect thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, protection. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the air, excuse me, the arrow that flies by day. Why? Because we got protection. And if you understand that what he is doing in your life is to protect you, it's not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Verse seven says, a thousand shall fall at thy side. You trying to figure out why everybody, why you going to all your teenage friends' funerals? The ones who was able to stay out to midnight, smoke whatever they want, bring whoever they wanted to bring home. You looking at their life now, as you're getting older, they still living with their mama. They got 15 kids. They, they and, and, and please don't misunderstand me. Public assistance is for those who need it. But if your intent and your mission and your goal is to stay on public assistance so that you don't have to work, that's not what it was intended for. It was to help those that needed a helping hand not to stay there. And they, they're looking at you like, oh, you think you're too good for us? No, no, it's not that I think I'm too good for you. I know, <laughs> I know I'm too good for you because I had a parent who loved me enough to say no. I had a parent who loved me enough to say, when them street lights come on, you, you're not, not coming to the porch. You better already be on the porch in the house. I had a parent that 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 loved me enough to say, no, you don't need to hang with so-and-so. They don't mean you no good. As Mother Winfrey comes parading going. <laughs> she was that parent. I thought she was a big lady. She was that big old nothing. And then when I got big and bad and thought I could do stuff on my own and found out <laughs> what did I do? I went right back to him and said, you know what? You was right. <laughs> you was so right. You was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being so stubborn and hard headed. It took a minute. I ain't going to lie to you. It, it didn't happen overnight. But I was like, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for, for giving me the five-fold ministry when we was out on that street and you just slapped daylight and night out of me. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> she was abusive, y'all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, anyhow, let me move. To protect you. The last two, and I'm giving to you quick, and we'll, 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 deal in, we'll, we'll get into this next week, but not just to protect you, but to prosper you and to prune you. To prosper you and to prune you. To prosper us and to prune us. Right? Part of his protection is so that we can succeed. Part of my mom's protection was so that I could get through college and you know, a good portion of my life without having to worry about mouths to feed, right? So that I can, I could live my life to the fullest without regret. You know, 
She wanted to see me prosper. She wanted to see me succeed. She wanted to see me get ahead. And God is the same way. You are after all his children. And if God being a good father, if men, mankind, gives good gifts to their children, how much more our Father in heaven wants to see us succeed, wants to see us prosper, wants to see us on the honor roll, wants to see us getting that promotion, wants to see us uh, in a place where we are the lender and not the borrower. He wants to prosper us and the why is to prune us. We're going to get into those next week. I got to let it go. I'm trying to do better, y'all. But the why, for real, for real, what you really wanted to know why, the answer is one of those. To fulfill his plan and purpose, to prepare us, to perfect us, to protect us, to prosper us, or to prune us. There is no question that you can ask that this will not be one of the answers for. Because it covers everything. Why did you let it happen like that? Why did you let, let them men beat that boy like that? That, it, it doesn't make sense to me, God. He did nothing wrong. And yet his life was cut short. Why? God is in exposing, and I believe that the year 2023, we're going to see a lot of that. What we've seen in, over the last couple of years is only a microscopic uh, portion of what God is doing in this time and season. There's going to be a lot of exposure, of uncovering of things. It's going to blow our minds. Hear me clear. The declaration of the Lord is that while he is also expanding and accelerating, he is also uncovering and exposing. And it's not just so that people can be exposed, but so that people can be protected. He's pulling the sheep's wool off of the wolf. He's, he's causing you to be heightened in your senses and awareness to see how big of eyes they have. What sharp teeth <laughs> they have. How hairy and, and big their snout is. Right? This is a season of exposure but also acceleration. But it is too protect us are you going to be that stubborn hard headed <laughs> child that I be seeing one of in the stores I be looking at some parents be like I know that ain't my kid because my kid no I be looking at some, 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 some of them, some, and, and, and sometimes, of course, at the leading of the Holy Spirit, don't just be going around trying to check everybody's child. But sometimes the Lord will lead you to go and say, sis, that's not how you speak to your kids in public. I, I, that was one time I, I, there was one time that I was out in Virginia, out in Alexandria. And this lady, she was, little girl, was just calling her, get your nappy bleep bleep bleep, you stupid beep bleep beep 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 bop bop. I mean, she was just cussing the child out. And I sat there and I was just like, I was angry, I was shocked, I was like. And the Lord said, go talk to her. 
I was like, if I talk to her, I'm going to cuss her out. You don't want me to go talk to her. God, I, I, I didn't hear that one right. <laughs> you didn't, you don't, no, you don't want me to do that. He said, go talk to her. And put a mirror. Not a physical mirror, but mirror. It. And I went and I talked to her. I said, um, she was telling, get her, get your bleep, bleep, bleep in the car. And as the baby got in the car. I called her. I said, excuse me, I'm not trying to alarm you or startle you or anything like that, but can I talk to you real quick, sister to sister? And I told her, I said, you are such a beautiful young lady. You you look nice. Is that your baby girl? She was like, yeah. I was like, she's, she's a beautiful young lady. I said, would you want somebody speaking to her like that she, there ain't, ain't nobody better speak to me like that or speak to my child like that I said so then what are you modeling for her if you don't want no man nobody else speaking to her like that then I need you sis not to speak to her like that that was God inspired and God, God, God orchestrated because there's some people They've been like, oh, you need to mind your bleep, bleep, bleep business. Get up out my bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> out my bleep, bleep face. Right? But she, 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 she received that because what I did was put a mirror. And she saw how ugly that was. Not coming from somebody else that she claimed she would protect her child for, but it was coming from her. And as a result, she hung her head down. I was like, it's okay. We all fall. We all make mistakes. I said, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And this was pre-pandemic. So she allowed me to hug her and went on about her business. I don't know what happened to that child. I don't know what happened to her. But I want to believe that God put me there at that time to perfect her, to protect the young one. We got to be willing to submit to what God is doing in our lives because he only has our best interest at heart. Amen. All right. Is this was 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 that helpful for you all tonight? We're going to I'll give you all the scriptures for prosper and prune us on next week. Do you all have any questions? Any questions? Okay, well, we'll get into the prosper and prune us because that pruning, um, for those of you that know what pruning is as far as with plants, it's tearing off leaves, dead leaves, and sometimes good leaves, but leaves that are low enough that would um, block the growth that needs to happen. Okay, so we'll, we'll get into that on next week. Amen. All right, you all, are there any questions, any questions that you all may have? You are, you are more than welcome, Minister Prince. Amen, amen. All right, if by chance you all think of a question, if not, I'm still going to cover what God has given me. But if you all think of a question, shoot us uh, a message on our website at thebridgebelievercenter.org. Or uh, shoot us an email at thebridgebelievercenter at gmail.com. Or you can call us uh, at 202-583-8222. Okay? But if you have any questions, let us know. And we will make sure that we address those and cover those. Okay? I love you all. I appreciate you all. Happy February, everyone. It was like just March yesterday. Oh, man. Time is like flying, you know. So happy February, happy Black History Month. Um, I have failed in my duties, but that Black History fact will be up before I go to sleep tonight. Check out our our uh, Facebook page for a new Black History uh, fact 
every day uh, this month. We have so, uh, we are a rich people and have a rich heritage. 28, 29 days doesn't even cover it, but you will see uh, some things you may know, uh, some facts that you may know, and then hopefully we'll see some things that you do not know that you learn something new, okay? But I love you. I appreciate you. And should God say the same, we'll be right back here next week, walking through the word. Love you all. Good night.